In this video tutorial, we learn how to calculate the yield to maturity on a bond. Yield to maturity or YTM is an internal rate of return or IRR of the bond as it assumes that interest received by the investor from the issuer on the bond are reinvested at the same rate that is YTM. It assumes that the investor purchases the bond today and keeps it till expiration that is the maturity of the bond. Over this period any interest received is not consumed but saved and reinvested at the YTM that is the IRR of the bond. From our first video on bond valuation we know that market interest rate and bond prices are inversely related. So if market interest rates go up bond prices should go down and if market interest rates go down bond prices should go up. Remember coupon interest rate remains fixed as this is the rate that is used to calculate the periodic interest on the bond. We also concluded the following three. So when YTM is equal to coupon rate, the market price will be equal to par value and the bond is selling at par. When the YTM is greater than coupon rate, then market price will be less than par value and the bond will sell at discount from par value. When YTM is less than the coupon rate, then the market price will be greater than par value and the bond will be selling at premium to par value. These will help us in the calculation of YTM on a bond that is selling at premium and a bond that is selling at a discount from par value. A bond that is selling at par value will have its YTM equal to the coupon rate and a bond that is selling at a discount from par value will have its YTM greater than the coupon rate and a bond that is selling at premium from par value will have a YTM that is less than the coupon rate. Next we see how to use them for calculation. In the first example here we have a 5 year 10% annual coupon bond that has a par value of $1000 and a market price of $960 and we are required to calculate its YTM. Now there are three ways in which this YTM can be calculated. A trial and error method in which we will continue putting in different values for YTM in the bond valuation formula and see if we get the price of the bond equal to $960. The rate at which the YTM gives us the exact value of the bond that is 960 is our YTM. This is quite time consuming approach. However, we know that the bond is selling at a discount from par value. So the YTM must be greater than the coupon rate. So we will always start here with a rate greater than 10%. An alternative approach is to use the interpolation method which we will be using in this video. The third approach is to use an excel sheet or a financial calculator which may not be always available. We know that in case the market price is equal to par value the YTM is equal to the coupon rate and we don't need any calculation in such cases for the YTM as we can safely assume that the YTM is exactly the coupon rate. In this case, the bond has a market value of $960 less than the par value. So we need to use the interpolation formula to calculate the YTM. This formula requires two NPVs to be calculated for the bond. One at a low rate, which will give us a positive NPV, and one at a high rate, which will give us a negative NPV. And because this will be a negative NPV, negative into negative should be positive. That is why in the second version here, I have put a plus sign rather than a negative sign because negative into negative will be positive. So this model will be used to calculate the YTM using the interpolation approach and it will require us to have two NPVs calculated for the bond. We know that the market price of the bond is less than the par value of the bond. That is the bond is selling at a discount from par value. So the YTM must be greater than the coupon rate which is 10%. The trick here is to understand 
that the coupon rate is 10% and the YTM must be greater than 10% as the bond is selling at a discount from par value. Rather than wasting our time on assuming a different low rate, and calculating the value of the bond at that rate, we can safely assume the low rate to be equal to the coupon rate. If the low rate assumed is equal to the coupon rate, in that case, the bond should be selling at par value. So we don't need to calculate the value of the bond at the low rate here, which will be exactly equal to the par value. Now, assuming the low rate is equal to 10%, the price of the bond should be $1,000. So to calculate the net present value of the bond at low rate, we need to calculate the difference between the value of the bond at the low rate and the value of the bond at present in the market. So this is the value of the bond at 10% and this is the current market price of the bond. The difference between these two is $40 positive. So we see that at the low rate of 10%, the NPV is $40. Now we assume that the high rate is 12% and we assume it because we know that the bond is selling at a discount from par value. So in no case, the rate should be less than 10%. So we have assumed a low rate of 10% here. Now to assume a high rate, we have to look at rates more than 10%. So we are assuming here 12%, you can assume 13%. It will not affect that much the answer. Using 12% as the high rate, we use this in the formula for bond valuation. So $100 here is paid every year for five years. So it is an annuity. The present value of the $100 annuity is equal to $100 multiplied into the present value discount factor for an annuity at 12% for 5 years. And the present value of the par value at 12% for 5 years is $567. Adding these two gives us the value of the bond at 12% which is equal to $927.5. The net present value at the high rate is equal to the difference between the value of the bond at the high rate that is 12% minus the current market price of the bond. So this is equal to a negative NPV of $32.5. So now we have a positive NPV at the low rate of 10% of $40 and we have a negative NPV of $32.5 at a high rate of 12%. Now we can use the interpolation formula for YTM from the previous slide. So the YTM is equal to the low rate plus the NPV at low rate divided by the NPV at low rate plus the NPV at high rate multiplied into high rate minus low rate. We know that this NPV is negative, but negative into negative gives us the positive sign here. If we solve this, we get 11.1% as the YTM and that is nearly the same as we get 11.08% from using Excel. Note that I am using 10 and 12 here. I am not using 10% or 12% or in other words 0 0.10 and 0 0.12. This is to help me avoid any mistakes or errors when I am multiplying or adding. You can see how this method helps us reduce the number of calculations needed for the YTM calculation. So we need it only to calculate the NPV of the bond at the high rate and not at the low rate because we just used the logic and calculated the NPV at the low rate and used it in the formula to get 11.1%. In this example, we calculate the YTM on a bond that is selling at premium to par value. It has the same 5 years maturity and 10% annual coupon and $1,000 par value as in example 1. However, it is selling at premium to par value. Now we will use the same interpolation model. We need to calculate 1 NPV at low rate which will be positive and 1 NPV at high rate which will be negative. As the bond is selling at premium, we know that the YTM must be less than the coupon rate that is less than 10%. We can safely assume 
that the high rate here should be equal to 10% and we don't need to calculate the value of the bond for a high rate of 10% because the 10% high rate will be equal to the coupon rate and in that case the bond value should be equal to the par value of $1,000. So again, we need to only calculate the bond value for one rate, which in this case will be the low rate. We show the calculations on the next slide. We are assuming that the high rate here is equal to 10% because the bond is selling at a premium. So the YTM must be less than the coupon rate. So the high rate here is 10% and as it is equal to the coupon rate, the price of the bond at 10% will be equal to $1,000. So the NPV at the high rate will be equal to the price of the bond at 10% minus the current market price, which is 1060. So it gives us a negative NPV of $60 as we require at high rate. We are assuming the low rate to be 8% and putting this 8% here in the bond valuation formula for this five year 10% coupon bond we get the value of the bond from this formula equal to $1,080.3. The NPV at the low rate is therefore the difference between the price at 8% minus the current market price. So that is equal to $20.3. So now we have the NPV at the low rate which is positive and we have the NPV at high rate which is negative. Using the interpolation formula for YTM if we put in the low rate and high rate and the NPV at low rate and high rate in this formula we get the YTM for this bond equal to 8.5% which is quite closer to what we get from Excel sheet that is 8.48%. Again, we are able to save time and effort in the calculation of the YTM because we are assuming here that the high rate is equal to the coupon rate because the bond is selling at premium and its YTM must be less than the coupon rate. At the start, we said that YTM assumes that all interest paid to the investor are reinvested at the YTM and this is an important implication of the YTM. Here we are accounting for it and determining what it implies. If the investor receives the $100 in the first year, he will reinvest it for the remainder of the life of the bond that is four years. So $100 received in the first year is reinvested at the YTM which is 8.48% for four years. $100 received at the end of year two is reinvested for three years at 8.48%. $100 received at the end of the third year is reinvested for two years at 8.48%. $100 received at the end of the fourth year is reinvested for one year at 8.48% and at the end of the fifth year the investor receives the final $100 interest payment which is not reinvested as this is the maturity of the bond. Also at the maturity the investor receives the final 1000 principal amount so the total cash flow that is available to the investor at the end of the five year period is 1592 2.30. This all assumes that the investor is not consuming the income from the bond but rather reinvesting it at the same rate that is the YTM for the remainder of the life of the bond. So after five years that total is $1,592.30. If the investor has purchased the bond for $1,060 five years ago and five years later, the total return of cash from that bond investment is 1,592.3. What is the annual rate of return that the investor has earned over the five years? So that is exactly equal to 8.48%. If we take out this assumption of reinvesting at 8.48% and the assumption that the investor is holding the bond till maturity, the YTM is not relevant or a correct measure of return then. Therefore, YTM is only relevant if the investor is holding the bond till maturity and is assuming to reinvest, which is quite unlikely, the interim cash flows from the bond at the YTM. Alternatively, a short way of verifying the YTM is to use the annuity formula because we have $100 that are received each year 
and if we assume that these hundred dollars are reinvested at 8.48 percent for five years we can calculate the future value of the annuity using this formula that will be equal to 592.3 dollars and at maturity that is five years later you will also get the par value of the bond so the terminal value will be again equal to 1592.3 dollars and you can get the YTM equal to 8.48 percent again similar calculation for a callable bond the yield to call that is YTC may be a better measure of return than YTM so we can also calculate the YTC that is the yield to call for a callable bond following the same rules and procedures as we discussed for the YTM for a callable bond YTM may not be relevant alternatively we may need to calculate a yield to call on that bond that is a YTC in this example here we have a five-year 10 percent 1000 par value bond currently selling in the market for one thousand and sixty dollars this bond is callable in three years time at a call price of one thousand and thirty dollars and we need to calculate its YTC we will follow the same procedures and use the same formula with certain modification so the valuation of the bond that is callable will have its formula adjusted for the number of periods being now equal to the call period and the call price will replace the par value of the bond in the formula as the bond is selling at premium we are setting the high rate equal to the coupon rate as we know that YTM must be less than the coupon rate at 10 percent the value of the bond is equal to 1022.54 dollars we have replaced the par value here with the call price and have used the callability period instead of the maturity of the bond at the high rate of 10 percent the NPV is a negative 37.46 dollars we then calculate the NPV of the bond at a low rate of 7 percent this is equal to 43.19 we have now the required input for the calculation of the YTC that is the yield to call on this bond and we have calculated that equal to 8.62 percent using the interpolation formula and from Excel it is 8.57 percent so it is quite close to what we can get from an Excel sheet if the coupon rate is more than the YTC the bond is likely to be called by the issuer the issuer can then issue a new bond at a lower interest rate and save interest expenses on the borrowing the investor will earn the YTC provided the bond is selling at a premium in such a case the YTC is less than the YTM the investor earns YTM if the bond is selling at par or discount from par value in such a case the YTC of the bond is greater than the YTM in the next video tutorial we will learn about duration and convexity measures of bond